Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Did you come to praise the Lord on this Wednesday night? Did you really come to praise the Lord on this Wednesday night? Can we just stand on our feet and begin to give God a hand clap of praise and just exalt him and just magnify him? Just, Father, we love you. Father, we magnify your name. We thank you for allowing us to be here in your presence one more time. God, we're, we come to lift up your name and receive a word from you tonight. How many know that he is the everlasting God? I need you to sing this song with me. It's a very simple song. If you know it, you can sing along. If you don't, just clap your hands. We're going to teach it to you, but it goes a little something like this. The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. I will trust you. I will wait on you. How many gonna wait on the Lord? I will wait on you. Come on, help me say the Lord is the Lord. Who shall? Whom shall I be afraid? Come on. The Lord is my life. Who shall? Who shall I be? I Come on, if you're going to wait, let me see you wave your hands. Say, I will trust. I will trust. I'm going to trust in you, Jesus. I will trust in you. Oh, I will remain, yeah, remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. I will, I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. I will. Come on, y'all. Let's clap my hands. Who shall I be? Come on. The Lord is my life. Who shall? Who shall I be? We 
Praise the Lord. Come on, let's put our hands together. Come on, if you love the Lord, can you put those blessed hands together for Jesus once again? Amen. God bless Brother Courtney for ushering us into worship. You may be seated uh, in the presence of the Lord. Amen. We want to welcome you to the arena of praise tonight. To all of our online viewers watching us, thank you all uh, so much for watching us virtually. Uh, we're going to go into a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father God, God, we bless your name on tonight. Lord, we give you glory for everything, Lord, that you've done and blessed in our lives. Lord, we honor you for your great name. We honor you for being so good and being so big in our lives. So, God, some of us became tired, frustrated, bound tonight. But, God, we just pray, Lord, for a refreshing. Let's be released in this house. God, we thank you, God, for renewing in the mind, a renewing in this atmosphere. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you charge us up, God, to receive and retain your word. Lord, we thank you, God, for results. Lord, that we will be transformed. We will be changed as a result of your word. And God, we will be to give you the praise and glory on them. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, can you put your hands together one more time? Amen. God bless you. God bless you. I want you to turn your Bibles to John, the fourth chapter. John, the fourth chapter. and also be in Hebrews, the 13th chapter. For our first two parts, we talked about, uh, I'm just growing grass, about growing our faith on the first part. And then last week, we talked about sanctification, uh, that we should be able to grow in that area uh, where we're sanctified. Not only are we saved, but we're also sanctified, uh, that we want to be better spiritually. Amen. God woke me up early this morning in prayer and start downloading what he had me to preach on this Sunday. And I believe that God's going to do something amazing this Sunday. So if you know somebody who's in need of deliverance on this Sunday, please, pretty please, bring them uh, to service on uh, this Sunday. Uh, John, the fourth chapter, verse 24, God bless. Uh, we met right before service. Amen. So thank God everybody who came uh, to our meeting. Amen. John, the fourth chapter, starting at verse 24. We read it from the New King James Version. Uh, the word of the Lord declares God is spirit those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth flip over to Hebrews the 13th chapter verse 15 I'm gonna go ahead and read it for the brevity of time Hebrews 13 verse 15 declares therefore by him 
Let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Amen. So tonight we're going to focus on praise and worship. So uh, the subject I had a title, Unashamedly to Praise and Worship. Uh, can you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm unashamedly not afraid to praise and worship the name of the Lord. <laughs> amen. Amen. So we're going to deal with praise and worship. Uh, once again, we're talking about growing tonight. Uh, but I want to really expand on, on the true essence of, of praise and worship. Uh, as, our, we're, as we were meeting earlier, I kind of give her like, you know, people talk about praise and worship. There's a difference between praise and worship. Like, y'all look at my Bible study tonight a little bit. Now, not, not all the way, but, you know, just, just a little, little tad bit, all right? So we're going to deal with praise and worship tonight. Uh, so according to John the fourth chapter, says, God's a spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. So when we look at that word worship, uh, I want you to think of the word worthy, worthy. So whenever we worship God, we are essentially communicating to God. We're showing God how much he is worthy into our lives. So when you begin to think of uh, your praise and worship, when you, when, you, when you begin to express God audibly, when you lift your hands, when you audibly open up your mouth, uh, what is God worth to you? So I want you to pause parenthetically uh, and really think about your day to day. Have, have, have you worshiped God today? Have you showed him how great he is, how awesome he is, how magnificent to, he is to you. So when we talk about worship, worship is showing God how worthy he is to us. When also we, when we worship, it means to reverence. So uh, whenever you reverence something, it means that you acknowledge it. You uh, you, you pay homage to it. Uh, so whenever, once again, I want to really get you in that, that realm of worship that when we worship God, we're just not reverencing God in the house of the Lord. But, but we worship God when we go home. So as, as Miss Daniel said tonight, Miss Angela, all right, worship, it is a lifestyle. It is how you live when you walk outside the church. Everybody worships when they come in, prayerfully, uh, that we're worshiping and reverencing God. But it's all about your lifestyle when you walk out those doors, when you show God how much he really means to you. So praise and worship is what I really want to talk about. Uh, it really deals with sacrifice. Uh, whenever we talk about praise and worship, oftentimes we reverence it to a slow song. All right, how many of y'all know it's just not about the speed of a song? Hello, somebody. I wish I had a church to help me. All right, but but worship from a biblical perspective, it deals with sacrifice. Somebody say sacrifice. Because when you go back and read the book of Genesis, you can read it when you go home about Abraham, one of my favorite passages of scripture. Uh, God tells Abraham, I need you to sacrifice your only, your only son, Isaac. And what you have to understand, people, guys, that uh, Abraham, he had, he had the fire there. He, he had the wood there. But where's the sacrifice? So, so sacrifice, it, it's all about giving up something. So in order for us to grow, to get to another level, to really transform our mind, the way we think when it comes to worship, uh, I want you to think about that the next time you worship, what are you really sacrificing? What are you giving up? What are you surrendering over to God when you lift your hands? Because just because I lift my hands doesn't mean I've given up anything. I wish I had a church up in here. All right. Just because all right, we put on our music in the car. God bless you, Miss Linda, for laughing in the past. I know I did for it. But just because you put it on your worship music in the car does not mean you worship. But true, authentic worship, according to the text, means when you give up something. Here it is. So worship is when you want to give up something. So what are you willing to give up in order to communicate to God that you are a true worshiper? Number one, look, some things that we can give up when we worship, somebody say pride. pride. All right, we, we got to get pride out the way. All right, it's all about me, 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 ah, 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 ah. All right, but worship is when you effectively articulate to God, God, it's all about you right now. Mm -hmm. All right, so when we start our prayer services, when we start having these uh, prayer services. The first thing we're going to start off is adoration. Loving on God. Acknowledging God. Lord, you're awesome. You're great. You're mighty. We ain't going to ask you for anything, but we first going to start off with adoration. So we got to get pride out the way. We got to get self out the way. Now that's number two, self. All right. Whatever selfish agendas that you have when it comes to praying, when it comes to worship, you have to be able to relinquish that and give it over to God. All right. Here it is. We're talking about giving up something. We have to give up what we love. All right, I'm in the text. 
All right? Because we have to give up what we ultimately love. Abraham, guess what? He loved his only son. All right? So you may not necessarily have to, once again, the, in the old covenant, all right, they would sacrifice rams and goats and stuff that they love. And Isaac, uh, Abraham in the text, he gave up what he loved. So think about all the stuff that you love that you ain't told nobody about. Think of all the dirt, all the sins, all the addictions. And when you give up what you really love, then you say, Lord, I'm worshiping you. So that is the place that I'm trying to get this church to gravitate to. That worship is just not about a slow song about just lifting your hands. But worship says, Lord, I'm giving up what I truly love. So I want y'all to think of this illustration. Uh, when you, um, thank God for the screen. When you are under arrest, when the police arrest you, all right, what do you do? They tell you to lift your hands, all right? If they put you against the wall or something like that, it's and they pat you down, all right? And they eliminate everything that should not be there. So when we worship, when we lift our hands, say, Lord, I surrender all. And, and that's, what, that's the mentality that you have to be able to uh, in, in implement in your life, that, Lord, when I worship you, I am surrendering all. I am under arrest. I am surrendering to your will and to your way. So here it is. Worship is stripping what does not belong. There, there's a stripping that must take place. There, there's a stripping that, that must take place, right? Not only in the church, but in your home, in your private space. All right. Are you willing to strip down your flesh? Are you willing to strip down those things, those hidden things, those secret things that nobody knows about but you and God? So that is worship. All right. So as God pours out his spirit, we must be able to reciprocate the poor. Everybody say reciprocate. reciprocate. So turn your Bibles to Acts, the second chapter, verse number 17. Acts 2, verse 17, once again, as God pours out his spirit, we must be able to reciprocate the poor. So according to Acts, the second chapter, verse 17, the word of the Lord declares, and it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. So I really want you to put on the images of God pouring. So in the spiritual world, I need you to shift your perspective, put on your spiritual lens. See God pouring out his spirit on us, on mankind, on your children, on your family. See God having the, the love, the passion, the concern to pour out his spirit on all, on all of us. And as God is pouring out his spirit, here it is, we must be able to reciprocate that pour. We must be willing to open up our spirit to receive that pour. So tonight, I want to talk about pouring out our spirits unashamedly. Pouring out our spirits unashamedly because uh, the truth of the matter is when I was uh, a young teenager, you know, I'm sorry, but well, I mean, I don't make no apologies about my upbringing, but I was raised in the Pentecostal church. I mean, shouting, dancing, people speaking in tongues, and, you know, people were shouting, like, what they shouting for? And I'm like, you know, it looks cool, you know. It seems like the praise, the shout is authentic, and I wanted a piece of that. I wanted to experience that joy, that passion, you know, they had been through stuff, uh, hot, hell and hot waters. So I wanted to know uh, what they were doing. But my problem was I was worried about what people would say about me. I had shame. I play basketball. You know, I don't want to look out of character. You know, you know, I was cool, laid back. You know, it's Ricky who played the drums. Not Ricky the pastor, but I, I used to play the drums. And I was ashamed to express my praise in another way. So tonight, people, God, that, I, you know, we all have different expressions of praise. I'm going to talk about that at the latter part of the message. But in this, whatever uh, praise that you have, uh, have you tried something different? Have you tried something new? I mean, clap our hands, you know, we shout, we, you know, lift our hands. And I just want to encourage you, if God leads you to try something different, don't ever be ashamed to praise God the way mm -hmm. that you see yourself praising in your head, Okay. So you have to be delivered from people's opinions, all right? Look at your neighbor's neighbor, you got to be delivered from people's opinions, all right? And that's when you grow, when you can get people's opinions out your mind, because a lot of people, once again, I've been in the church my whole life. We come to church, and we sit beside the person who know all about business, and when you try to clap and shout, mm, I know what you was doing last night, you were, you were hypocritical, all right? And, and that, that, that hinders us from authentically praising God. All right, but, but how many of y'all know that, that you know, God wants us just as we are, you know, so you can't come in here and sit beside somebody, your friend, your little boot thing, and, you know, because it, it hinders your praise. So you have to get delivered from people's opinion that I need something from the Lord in the name of Jesus. Because at the end of the day, only God can judge you. Mm -hmm. 
And that's the mentality that you got to develop because, you know, I was doing some analytical research when it comes to church. And most people don't come to church because the church is judgmental. Number one, across the whole nation, why you don't go to church? Because the people judge me. What I got on, you know, what they know about my history. And once again, if we want to grow <laughs> and grow grass in the church, mm -hmm. we want to grow as the people of God and increase the church. We can't be looking at people when they come in with a little short skirt on the end of the day and looking at them like they're crazy. Praise the Lord. All right. So we cannot be judgmental. All right. So, Pastor, why um, should we praise and worship God? Why, why, why should we praise and worship? Praise and worship builds up the church. Okay. Praise and worship. It builds up the church. So go to 1 Corinthians 14 and 26. 1 Corinthians, I'll be reading from the NIV version. So if you have a uh, cell phone, you can look at the NIV version or iPad, what have you, electronic device. 1 Corinthians 14 and 26, NIV. Uh, I'll give you a few minutes to get there. But the word of the Lord declares, What then shall we say, brothers and sisters, when you come together, each of you has a hymn? Or a song, praise and worship, there it is. Or a word of instruction, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. Everything must be done so that the church may be built up. So when Pastor Juwan and Brother Courtney, when they're on their instruments, they're just not playing just to be playing. You know, it's, it's, it's a, a biblical meaning behind for them to, to praise and worship. All right, and it's ultimately to build up the church. What does that mean? All right, whenever we build up the church, it means that it, we edify the church. Mm -hmm. All right, the church is edified. The church uh, is benefited, and it uplifts the church. It takes the church up to another level. So even if somebody walk in depressed, lonely, suicidal, having anxiety, when they get into praise and worship, it, it builds them up. All right, to get them up out of their low place. So that's why, you know, a lot of people try to deny the spirituality. Well, you know, I don't need church. Well, I, I beg to differ. I think everybody needs church and the Lord. Of course, your relationship would always, you know, take precedence over church. But I think at some point in your life, everyone should go to church because the church is ultimately to help build and grow you up. Okay. So the praise and worship people of God, it, it takes the church to the next level. And uh, what we're trying, uh, attempting here at the Ring of Praise, once again, uh, starting off, I have to be able to teach uh, that, that we want to experience the glory of God. Mm -hmm. All right. I don't know what, you know, y'all used to, but, you know, I'm, I'm reminded of Moses when he said, Lord, show me your glory. All right. That is my prayer. Lord, every time we walk through the door, every time the praise and worship is going forth, Lord, show me mm -hmm. your, your glory. glory because we want to experience an encounter and a move from the Lord. So, uh, so we're believing God for his presence. We're believing for miracles, signs, and wonders. And in order for all of this to uh, hit home, to, to uh, land here at the ring of praise, uh, we must be able to have corporate praise and worship. Let the church say corporate praise and worship. Corporate. All right, so everybody is responsible. Everybody has a part of, of praising and worship the name of the Lord. Why? Because the Bible says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue to be in my mouth. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. And once again, you know, we, we come up here, try to pump and prime you. Come on, open up your mouth and tell the Lord thing. And that's, that's all fine and good. But when you have the understanding, the teaching that I've commanded uh, to praise the name of the Lord, then we all experience the glory of the Lord. All right. So we must have corporate praise and worship. So everyone must be engaged. Everyone must be participating. So praise and worship. Why, Pastor? It causes walls to fall down. Okay. Go to Joshua 6, verses 1 through 20. Joshua, the sixth chapter, verses 1 through 20. Praise and worship causes walls to fall down. Okay? Kind of talked about this this past Sunday during exhortation. But I'm going to go ahead and start reading some kind of long passage of scripture, but you will get the meaning of it. Uh, Joshua 6, verses 1 through 20. Now, Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out, none came in. The Lord said to Joshua, see, I have given Jericho into your hand, its king and the mighty men of valor. Joshua 6, the third verse, you shall march around the city, all you men of war. You shall go all around the city once. This you shall do six days. And seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of rams, horns, because before the ark. But the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times, and a priest shall blow the trumpets. It shall come to pass. When they make a long blast, a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, 
that all the people shall shout with the great shout. So stop right there. So even before they got to the wall, all right, the men of God was telling the people, look, we're going to make some noise. We're going to get loud. And on the corporate level, all the people are going to shout with the great shout. Then the wall of the city will prophetically fall down flat and the people shall go up. Every man shall go before him. So when you look at that, so that there, there's power in, in, in the corporate. All right. So whenever we have corporate prayer, corporate praise and worship, when everyone participates, then walls can come down. So let's keep reading. Verse 10. Skip down to verse 10 for the brevity of time. Now, Joshua had commanded the people saying, you shall not shout or make any noise with your voice. Nor shall the word proceed out of your mouth until the day I say to you, shout, then you shall shout. Verse 16, and the seventh time it happened, when the priest blew the trumpets, that Joshua said to the people, shout, for the Lord has given you the city. All right, look to them, they were power in your shout. There's power in your shout. So verse 20, last verse, so the people shouted when the priest blew the trumpets. Did y'all catch that? Let's read it again, verse 20. So the people shouted when the priests blew the trumpets. So when the leaders blew the trumpets, then the people start shouting. So when the leader, aka your pastor, whoever the man, what of God you're serving, when they shout, you shout. Uh, see, brother Tim, he, he's learning something. Then you shout. <laughs> all right? Because, once again, it's a corporate effort. All right? Here it is. And it happened when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, when they heard the sound of the organ, Brother Courtney, <laughs> and the people shouted with a great shout. Somebody say, then, yeah. then the wall fell down flat. Then the people went up into the city, and every man stripped before him and took the city. And I come to preach, I'm trying not to preach tonight, but you never know who got a wall in front of them when they walk in. You never know who has a wall of depression. You never know if you're ready to commit suicide. But when the people of God shout, every wall that's standing in front of somebody, when we shout, those walls got to come down. And I don't know who needs a wall to come down even tonight on this Wednesday Bible study. But out there about 10 people in here opened up your mouth and began to release a sound of praise and shout up in this place. Oh my goodness, I'm trying not to go there. Let me get back to teaching. I'll teach faster. So walls. Let's, let's talk about it. Walls represent obstacles. Everybody say obstacles. Obstacles. All right, what is an obstacle? Something that prevents you from moving forward. All right, a wall is in front of you. It hinders your progress. It stunts your growth. Hence, I'm just trying to grow gas. All right, so... Uh, most people that come in with walls and it represents obstacles, it represents hardship, okay? Uh, when people walk in, they, they have hard, difficult times, trying times, all right? Children going through, family going through, sick, gotta have surgery, in and out of the hospital. You never know what people are going through. The walls sometimes can cause depression and even discouragement. And sometimes it brings on a spirit of heaviness. So go to Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61, verses 1 through 3. Isaiah 61, verses 1 through 3. I'm sorry, we're going to, we'll try to get all these scriptures on the screen. Praise the Lord. we got to download this software. We ain't gotten around to it yet. Me and Tim been working, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Isaiah 61, verses 1 through 3. And if y'all want to follow along, y'all can say, hold up, Pastor. Give me time to get there if you need me to stop. Take your time. <laughs> Ain't it good? Y'all good? Okay, Isaiah 61, verses 1 through 3. The Spirit of the Lord of God is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the seventh year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion. Here it is. To give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment, here it is, of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they may be called trees of righteousness, the plan of the Lord, that they may be glorified. So go back. So the oil of joy for mourning, to those who've been going through, those who've been stressing out, according to the scripture, that they will place the garment of praise for the spirit of heaven. So I want y'all to understand the seriousness of your praise and your worship. 
that, that, that praise will, will, will take off the spirit of heaviness. That, that some people will come in bound, afflicted, wounded, hurt, still dealing with stuff from their past, still dealing from guilt stuff. But when you get in the praise, mm -hmm. God will give the praise and it will take off the spirit of heaviness. So that's why, that's how we're going to grow. All right, people come in with problems, with situations, but the going to praise will take the place of the spirit of heaviness. All right, so when we talk about praise and worship, uh, when we look at the walls of Jericho coming down, um, one of the next points I want y'all to write down that praise and worship has to be in unison. Uh, it has to be in unison. It has to be on unison. One of my favorite passages of scriptures is Acts, the second chapter, verses one through four. It's little like the book of Acts. God bless my mom back there. <laughs> Go to Acts, the second chapter, verses one through four. All right. Acts two, verses one through four. All right. And we in the month of May. Praise the Lord. Pentecost, man. Yeah. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, here it is. They were all with one accord. Everybody say one accord. One accord. They were all in one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven. So just because they're on one accord, now there's a sound from heaven. A, a sound that, that, that the Lord is present, that the Lord's presence is evident as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. All because they're on one accord. Verse 3, then they appeared to them, divided tongues as a fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them others. All right. So when praise and worship, all right, when we're all on one accord, when we're all in unison, then guess what? Then the house will be filled with the glory of God. And people who've been seeking the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues, they'll be able to get that gift all because we are all on one accord. So think of that day of Pentecost. They all want a core people. I believe in the book of Acts that about 3,000 souls got saved all because they were all on one accord. So when we come in here on Sundays and on Wednesdays, when Brother Corden and Pastor Juan is singing, let's get on one accord. Let's not leave anybody hanging because you never know the miracles and the breakthrough that will come as a result of our corporate worship. Okay? So here it is. So many times, people, God, we, we try to be intellectual. We try to be smart. And, you know, sometimes we come in dragging. And I'm tired. Like tonight, I was tired. I wasn't feeling that. Long day, you know, early up in the morning prayer. Mm -hmm. Just couldn't go back to sleep. It was a long day. All right. But yeah. last time I checked, I still got breath in my body. Praise the Lord. Come on. And last time I checked, I'm not six feet under. Mm -hmm. All right. That's why I got a reason to praise the name of the Lord. Yeah. All right. So here it is, Hebrews 13 and 15. Let's go back to our main scripture. And uh, I'm going to end with the different expressions of praise and worship. Hebrews 13 and 15. Therefore, by him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. So essentially, when we praise, when we worship God, I already told you that it's, it's a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. And at the end of the day, all right, we gotta we gotta praise and worship even when we don't feel like it. Yeah. When we're tired and frustrated. All right. Remember Hebrews 13 and 15. Therefore, by him let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise. It's a sacrifice sometimes. All right, you ain't gonna feel like doing it all the time. Mm -hmm. All right, but God is gonna be looking for the fruit of our lives, giving thanks to his name. All right. So last but not least, I want to go over the different expressions of praise and worship and why we worship the way that we do. Uh, let me see how much time. Yeah, so go to Second Chronicles 20 and 19. Second Chronicles 20 and 19. And I want to talk about um, why we stand when we sing. So I really want to ensure that y'all understand the whole praise and worship segment on why we stand and when we're while we're not sitting down during praise and worship, why we stand. Second Chronicles 20 and 19 declares, and the Levites. Of the children of Korhite stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. So they're standing and they're praising God and there it says that they have a loud voice. So when I talk about, you know, I need you know, y'all to give God a radical praise, it's biblical that the people they shouted. They they participated with a loud voice. So that is why we stand when we sing. So don't ever feel ashamed to stand in the realm of praise and worship. All right. Psalm 47 and 1, why we clap our hands. All right, so when I start saying, come on, clap your hands. Come on, clap your hands. Come on, tell the Lord, thank you, clap your hands. 
It says it in Psalm 47 and 1. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. So even in your clap, you're also opening up your mouth. You're shouting with the voice of triumph. What is triumph? Triumph says that I got the victory. All right, y'all know when your team is doing well, you're clapping. Some good happened. Mm -hmm. All right, so as you clapping in service on Sunday, some good is happening or some good getting ready to happen. All right, I may be in a situation right now, but I'm clapping because I have the victory. Okay? So, Pastor, why do we lift our hands? Why do we lift our hands? Go to Psalm 63 and 4. Psalm 63 and 4. The word of the Lord declares, Thus I will bless thee while I live. I will lift my hands unto thy name. Mm -hmm. Psalm 134 and 2. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. 1 Timothy 2 and 8. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath or doubting. So that is why we lift our hands because the Bible tells us to. So I want you all to take uh, these first three, okay? Why we stand when we sing, why we clap our hands, why we lift our hands. Number four, all right? Once again, everybody's different. You may not be the same. Some people may stand. Some people may clap. Some people may lift their hands. Number four, why we have audible praise unto God. When I tell you to say hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Bless his name. Lord, you're so great. Lord, you're so awesome. You're so wonderful. Go to Psalm 103 and 1. Psalm 103 and 1. While we have audible praise unto God, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me, bless his holy name. That's one of my favorite ones because it says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. So when I come to church, my mentality, my mindset, I'm about to give God all I got. All right, Mother Betty Taylor. Uh, thank God for Mother Betty Taylor who uh, I stayed with uh, when I graduated college. Didn't have no money, didn't really have a job, but I stayed there. She, she asked me this question one day. She said, son, why don't you praise God? I said, I do. I clap my hands. I hold my mouth. Mm -mm. I said, Mother Taylor, what, what you want? Son, why don't you praise God to dance? Mother Taylor, why are you? She said, son, because she's uh, she has MS condition. She can't walk. She's limping and stuff like that. She said, son, I wish I had two good legs to praise God. Mm -hmm. And from then on, y'all, it has changed my whole life. So when you come, what are you trying to say tonight, Pastor? When you come into the house of the Lord, there's somebody in the hospital. There's somebody in the wheelchair. There's somebody laid up on their bed wishing that they can praise the name of the Lord. So when you come into the house of the Lord, you ought to be losing your mind crazy and say, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for one more time to lift my hands. Lord, I thank you for one more time to clap my hands. Lord, I thank you for one more time I can shout and dance and give God the glory. And if you're thankful that God gave you two good hands and two good feet, I dare you to stand up to your feet and give God a praise. Hallelujah. Come on, God. Come your hands. We got two good hands and two good feet. That's some good country music right there. I guess my Bible study just ended because Portland started playing shot beat. Come on, God. We made it to another service, y'all. This is why we praise. This is why we open up our mouth and give God praise. Come on, somebody clap. I got one more. Hold it. Keep it right there. Now, here we go. Y'all wondering, is dancing biblical? I got scripture. Psalm 30 and 11. David is right here. Going through hell, people trying to kill him. You have turned me my morning into dancing. You have put my sack off and loaded me with gladness. This is David. And then he said in 2 Samuel, the 6th chapter, verse number 16. And as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michael saw his daughter look through a window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord. Come on. I want you to take about 30 seconds. In. You don't know what people are dancing for. You don't know what people are leaping for. And just give God praise. This is why we pray. This is why we worship. 
Hallelujah. You got two good legs. You might as well use it. All right, we got to go. I know Porter will have a church all by himself. Don't worry about him. He's praising God on the instruments. God bless you, Facebook. God bless you, YouTube. We'll pray. This is the arena of praise, right? This is what we do. This is what we've been commanded to do. All right, we get ready to go. Come on, clap your hands together for Jesus one more time. Amen. Praise the Lord. One more time for the Lord. Yes. Amen. Just trying to grow my grass. All right. So y'all see Mr. Marlon running around this church. Oh, he just growing his grass. Praise the Lord. <laughs> see Christina? You know, shout back there. I, I saw Miss Linda up there cutting the step back there. You think I ain't sorry? The camera got on you. Tim put the camera on you. I was like, Miss Linda trying to shout back there. Trying to hide, too. Don't be ashamed. Come on up here and dance before the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I pray that y'all got something out of Bible study. But somebody, uh, you may need prayer tonight. I want to open up the altar, invite you to the altar. You may need prayer. Somebody watching live may have a prayer request you can put in the chat. Uh, but I don't want to end this service unless someone who's in need of prayer needs me to intercede on behalf of you and your family. Amen. The altar is available for you all. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. We have time for your soul. We have time to pray for you, intercede. Amen. Well, come on, let's clap our hands together for Jesus Connie one more says, time. Donnie says you need prayer. Donnie Burns. Donnie. Connie. Connie. Okay. Praying for Miss Connie. Amen. I'm gonna be praying for her. Amen. This atmosphere, I want you to get a seed in your hand and get the offering. Amen. Last week I forgot to get, do I get caught up in Bible study sometimes. I just forget. Yes, ma'am. We're praying for Ivana, amen. We're praying for her. We're here, we're praying for Miss Linda getting ready to have surgery next Tuesday, I believe. Is that correct? Praying for Miss Linda. So put Miss Linda Wobble on your prayer request list. Praying for her, amen, hallelujah, hallelujah. If you want to give electronically, you can give electronically. Cash out, dollar sign, arena praise, and online, arenapraise.com. But whatever seeds you have, I want you to lift it up before the Lord as we dismiss. There may be somebody online who may want to sow, may want to give, want to give your life back to Christ. The only thing you have to do is confess that Jesus, Lord, believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and you shall be saved. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you, God, for this time of Bible study, this time of sharing, this time of impartation. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we're going to be unashamedly to praise and worship your name. Because your Bible commands us to. Your Bible instructs us to. God, you blessed us with two good hands and two good feet, God. Lord, you blessed us, God, with the fruit of our lips. So, God, we're going to offer up a sacrifice of praise. And Lord, every time we walk through those doors, every time we wake up, God, we're going to honor you, God, audibly with our mouths, God. Because, Lord, we want to honor you. We want to worship you in spirit and in truth. So, God, receive our heart tonight. Receive, God, our heart of gratitude, God, to worship you in spirit and in truth. So, God, we honor you. We praise you. We magnify you. God, bless Miss Connie. Lord, bless her going in and bless her going out, God. We pray, Lord, for her family. We pray for her well-being, God. We pray, God, even for Ivana tonight, Lord, that you begin, God, to touch her body. God, begin, God, to even regulate her mind even right now, God. We pray, God, for complete healing, Lord, that you deliver and make hold on tonight. Lord, we can cover God, our church mother, Miss Linda Barber, Lord, as she prepares for surgery. Uh, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you got the doctor's hand, God. We thank you, Lord, for the praise report and the testimony that shall come forth on how you did and how you healed, delivered and set free. Lord, protect us as we leave from this place, but never from your presence. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Hug somebody, tell you good to see you. Good to see you.